Meanwhile, as, uh, well, the CDC's rather cruel, irrational guidance traps our kids in the forever pandemic, Mark Mix has a little something-something to say about that. Mark Mix is president of the National Right to Work Committee, a 2.8 million member public policy organization, also serves as president of the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation. Mark, welcome back to the show. Gal, good to be with you this morning. Uh, Lots of breaking news, right? Yes, right, yeah. Are you surprised by that uh, Star Chamber (laughs) oversight Facebook board saying, oh, hell no, we're not letting you back on our platform? You know, oh, Gal, you're right. Your your description of a Star Chamber is exactly spot on. There's no question about that. It's amazing that communications and conversations and speech are being limited by private entities that were grown by government in the first place. But here we are. Yeah. And that's yeah. exactly – you took the words out of my – that's exactly what I said this morning. Here we are, the cancel culture growing even stronger. But uh, apparently so is the uh, second largest uh, teachers union as it was uh, making recommendations to the Center for Disease Control. And, uh, boy, there's another august organization uh, relative to reopening schools. Work us through all that. Yeah, Gail, this is uh, part and parcel of the power that has been assembled by this private organization, i.e. the teachers' union. Uh, this is not teachers we're talking about. These right. are radical, radical leaders that have taken over uh, what was back in the 1960s and 1970s a professional organization. They changed their status to labor unions in the mid-70s, and they have exercised labor union-like monopoly power ever since. And their power over the schools and their power over politics and their power over this White House and this administration is on display today for parents across the country. And, you know, when Franklin Roosevelt was confronted with this very question back in the 1930s when they were passing private sector labor management relations and federal power, he was asked about the government. He says, you know, it's unthinkable that we would unionize government. Well, that that statement by Franklin Roosevelt's coming back as prescient now that these, these union officials are able to control Center for Disease Control Agencies about when schools reopen. I, I, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you do get it because it's all about (laughs) ongoing power and control. And yes, I might go as far as saying paybacks to the unions. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it is it is interesting. Um, the idea that this private organization run by what are clearly radicals, I mean, just look at the leadership of the American Federation for Teachers, uh, Randy Weingarten, and she's a political power broker. She controls money that comes from the local school district up through the state school districts up to the International Union, the AFT, through a per capita unified due structure that allows her to play politics. And, and frankly, you know, I guess you got to give her a pat on the back, given the fact that she's now in control of when schools reopen. Now she's in control of the science. And I use my finger quotes here, Gal, because, you know, that we're supposed to be relying on science. And it appears that the decisions they're making now about the school districts have nothing to do with really the science of children uh, being in school. I, I mean, I'm not an expert on uh, on viruses and things like that, but I do know from what I read and from folks that we respect and that have, have tried to talk about this honestly, that really the schools should be reopened. And the fact that there's this exercise of power is scary. And it should be scary to, to citizens and parents in Colorado as well across the entire nation. Well, when you look at what this has done to our kids, I have uh, the great pleasure of uh, talking with uh, one of our local district superintendents, uh, Dr. Deirdre Pilch, uh, Greeley Evans School District 6. And you, you, you Look at what they have done throughout the past uh, 13, 14 months in order the hoops uh, that this district has jumped through in order to reopen. And then you'd have an outbreak and you'd have to quarantine and you'd have to pull out cohorts. But in terms of all the sanitizing and uh, all of the uh, requirements that were put in place by the CDC, quote, following, air quote, following the science, the ever changing science. But what is so heartbreaking, Mark, is that whatever happened to what is best for the kids, as we are seeing kids across the country uh, sink into the depths of depression, we're seeing a rise, a spike in mental health issues, in suicides, in substance abuse as a result of what they have been put through. It's absolutely heartbreaking. But I love Uh, The words coming out of the Biden administration, we follow the science. Okay, which science? And I get science changes in, you know, a novel pandemic, a a 
novel coronavirus. I understand that. But it seems to me we are following voodoo science. Yeah, well, apparently the science changes daily on this issue, but on other issues where they're trying to exert control, the science is completely settled. And I, I, I think you know what I'm talking about, Gal, on the so-called mm-hmm. climate issues. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's completely settled. There can be no change. But, yeah, you know, the science has changed. And, frankly, when it comes to power, I think to sum it all up, you know, Al Shanker, who was the former president of the American Federation of Teachers, in a rare moment of candor, uh, when he was being interviewed by an editorial board of the newspaper, he, he basically said this. He said, when children start paying union dues, we'll start representing children. And that is a great metaphor for where we are today. And the good news is, I think parents of kids that are that are impacted by the conditions that you have laid out are looking for alternatives. And hopefully what we do is we create competition in the in the educational sector. The government school system is controlled and, and run uh, the, the country's educational system for too long. And hopefully charter schools and private schools and other types of schools will pop up and parents will get choices about what to do and be able to make decisions for their children that are beneficial uh, instead of having to basically sit back and wait for some union official to tell the CDC what's right and when it's time to open schools. That's not good policy in my view. I wanted to get your take, Mark, before I let you go, and I always appreciate your time and your insights. But uh, uh, Joe Biden's uh, initial uh, joint address to Congress, uh, very spendy one for the American public. Oh, no, no. Only the rich are going to pay their fair share. I keep forgetting. But uh, a statement he made I thought was very, very interesting when he was talking about uh, the middle class built this country. Unions built the middle class. What's your take on that? Well, I, I mean, certainly, if people want to join unions voluntarily, they have they should be able to amplify their voice and, and improve their conditions. But frankly, you know, that's just rhetoric and propaganda. I mean, that's embarrassing to the rest of Americans, the 94 percent of Americans in the country who are have decided for whatever reason not to be part of a union. You know, you talk about the Bessemer, Alabama, Amazon distribu- distribution center, where 12.7 percent of those eligible actually voted for unionization, and that was a workplace that was 85 percent black. I mean, these in, the president actually can't cut a video encouraging them to go to join the union so look American American people built the American middle class, and America is a whole host of people. You don't have to have a union card to be an American worker or in the American middle class. You can you can use your opportunities in a, in a country founded on individual freedom and an experiment in self-government. It works. It's worked for Americans for years. It will continue to work for Americans if we can just make it through this this administration. I, you know, the the command and control that government is exercising over our lives is growing each day. And um, and obviously your lead into this segment about the command and control of a particular private organization to control speech is a great example of that. Right. Yeah. And it was interesting because, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, but I was working from a piece out of NPR talking about this before this decision uh, to uh, extend that uh, Facebook ban on President Trump. But uh, they threw out a phrase that uh, said something to the effect of this will be a model for big tech uh, to exercise control over free speech. And I'm like, Wait a minute. That doesn't even make sense. That's an oxymoron. Exercise control over free speech? (laughs) Well, these are inexplicable things, Gail. I I wish I had the uh, the intellectual capacity to dissect all that and unpack it. But frankly, we just got to continue to pay attention to what they're doing. And we got to continue to mobilize and, and inform people about what's happening. Mark Mix, president of the National Right to Work Committee, a 2.8 million member public policy organization. He also serves as president of the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation. So, Mark, where can we find out more about you and your work? Well, you can find us on that amazing Internet at www.nrtw.org. And I'm not sure. I guess I, I assume our site is still up at this point. But then right. again, fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. There you go. Mark Mix, again, thanks for your time, your perspectives. Appreciate you. Thanks, Gail.